Between July 1st and July 3rd, outside the town of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, in the year 1863, Union General George Meade's Army of the Potomac clashed with Robert E. Lee's Army of Northern Virginia. Over the next three days, around 50,000 men would die. Think about that. In just three days, almost as many men died at Gettysburg as would die in the entirety of the Vietnam War. It was hell on earth. One participant in this battle was a man by the name of Joshua Chamberlain. Chamberlain wasn't really a fighting man or a career soldier. Matter of fact, when the Civil War broke out, he was a professor of modern languages at Bowdoin College in Maine. Before that, he was a professor of rhetoric and eventually taught nearly every subject in the curriculum. He studied theology as well as attending lectures from many great minds such as Harriet Beecher Stowe. He was a married man with five children, and in addition to English, he could also speak Greek, Latin, Spanish, German, French, Italian, Arabic, Hebrew, and Syriac. I don't even know what Syriac is. All I know is that he knew how to speak that shit. So as you can see, this is a man who's devoted his entire life to academics, a thinking man, and he believed in the cause of the Union. So when the time came, he enlisted in the United States Army, and when the Battle of Gettysburg occurred, he had attained the rank of Colonel of the 20th Maine. Chamberlain and his men had a very important task during the second day of the battle. They were assigned to two rocky hills just south of Gettysburg known as Little Round Top, and he and his men were on the far left of the entire Union Army. The strategic significance here was huge. They could not, under any circumstances, allow the rebel soldiers to flank them. They were to hold this position at all costs. It wasn't too long before the men of the 15th Alabama, as well as men from Hood's 4th and 5th Texas regiments, started charging up the hill, attempted to flank the Union position. The men of the 20th Maine repelled this charge, and the next one, and the one after that. But Johnny Reb was relentless. Over and over again, they charged Chamberlain's position. And with each charge, the men of the 20th grew weaker. Things weren't looking too good for Chamberlain and his men. Chamberlain himself was at the time suffering from malaria and dysentery. And as the fight raged on, he took a musket ball through his sword scabbard, badly bruising his thigh, as well as taking shrapnel in his right foot. His men were double back on themselves. Some of his officers were urging that they fall back. Most of the soldiers were wounded and they were quickly running out of ammunition. And yet the rebel soldiers kept charging, wave after wave. Things looked hopeless. How the hell could they survive another charge from the rebels with no ammunition? So Chamberlain made the call to fix bayonets. They would charge down the hill and meet the rebels head on. Bayonets fixed. Bayonets! He screamed. And in case you're not sure what a bayonet is, it's a long blade, almost like a mini spear that you can attach to your rifle. They're used for close-up combat to thrust into the bodies of your enemies. The ones during the Civil War were pretty long, but the ones issued to troops nowadays are shorter and look more like uh, big long knives. The men of the 20th Maine fixed their bayonets and Chamberlain led them down that hill, straight into the charging rebels. And not only did they succeed in stopping the Confederates, but they captured them as well. With almost no ammunition, just bayonets, balls of steel, and a refusal to give in. A refusal to quit, to retreat. And in doing so, they held that flank. I think about this story sometimes when I'm going through hard times. Sometimes it may seem like you're up against impossible odds. A fight or a struggle so hard, you don't think there's any way you can possibly win. Maybe you feel the urge to break ranks and retreat. Or just surrender to whatever it is that life's throwing at you. But sometimes, sometimes when you resolve to fight, to fight with everything you have in you and you refuse to give in, sometimes you win, even against seemingly impossible odds. And sometimes you lose. There's no guarantees. The men of the Alamo fought as hard as anybody ever has, yet they all perished. But over a month later, Sam Houston's outnumbered Texians led a charge against Santa Ana and defeated his entire army in just 18 minutes. It's like what Clint Eastwood said in the outlaw Josie Wells. When things look bad and it looks like you're not going to make it, then you got to get mean. I mean plum mad dog mean. Because if you lose your head and you give up, then you neither live nor win. That's just the way it is. So there you have it. That's all I got for today. Thought I'd do a little short episode and get all corny on y'all's asses. But you never know. Maybe somebody needed to hear this. Or maybe I'm just talking to myself. Maybe I need to hear it. I personally let my bayonet get dull and rusty for far too long. But guess what? I've been sharpening that motherfucker every day this week, and right about now I'm ready to stab the devil in the face with it. The Wild West is full of last stands. Men who fought to the death, as well as men who scratched themselves out of the bowels of hell to live another day. Think about Hugh Glass, mauled by that grizzly and left for dead, no rifle or knife or tools. He refused to quit. He persevered, and he lived. So if you're going through anything, maybe you lost your job, maybe you got money problems, maybe the demons in your head are doing jumping jacks, whatever the fuck. Like Clint Eastwood said, get plum mad dog mean. And like Chamberlain, fix your metaphorical bayonet. Don't retreat. Don't surrender. Face your struggles head on and fight as long as you've still got blood pumping through your heart. 
If you win, you'll come out stronger than you ever thought possible. And if you lose, at least you gave it your best shot. Anyway, stay tuned, y'all. I've got a full-length podcast ready to record tonight, and hopefully I'll be able to quickly edit it and get it released in the next couple of days. Till then, fix bayonets. Thank you.